What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, Entitled Mother Demands I Give Her Spoiled Kid My Blanket During Drill. So, fair warning, this did happen a bit ago, but I wasn't permitted internet at the time this all went down. Also, the place I went isn't exactly somewhere I can talk a lot about, like, legally. Also, all names literally must be censored. Also, this was before the coronavirus was a thing at all. No pandemic going on here, no fear of contagion. To give you pretty much the most descriptive answer I can give, I was at a rehab facility for kids with severe mental illness and or behavior behavioral issues, I have really bad PTSD and depression, and I was in a really dark place, which is why I was there. Our parents weren't allowed to stay here with us, but parents did come and visit occasionally, and today, a girl's mother was visiting her. This girl wasn't very well liked. She acted spoiled, entitled to everything, and would routinely insult other people. She's the entitled kid. I'll call her Martha. The whole group was glad to be away from Martha while she visited her mom in a separate area. I was one of the other kids. I was 16 while Martha was 15. And the other girl involved in the story, we'll call her May, was 14. May and I were particularly close. May shared a name similar to my younger sister and was the same age. So I saw her as a younger sibling figure and took care of her a lot. While she was 14, she acted a lot younger, so I kind of ended up caring for her, especially seeing as the staff could be quite neglectful of our emotional needs. On this particular night, I was laying down in my bed. It wasn't super late, it was only around 8.30, visiting hours for parents end at 9ish, but I happened to be pretty tired and was laying down half asleep. And then my ears were invaded with a blaring noise. Someone pulled the freaking fire alarm, meaning we had to evacuate the whole huge building. This had happened twice before, so I was rather prepared. Kids happen to pull the fire alarm here a lot, looking to cause trouble or escape or whatever. It was pretty cold and rainy out, so I threw on my shoes and grabbed a blanket I had brought from home. I was sensitive to noise and got overwhelmed pretty easily, so evacuating a crowded building full of people and noise wasn't fun, especially considering how I'd hit my head on the way out, so my head was already pounding. While while all this was not very fun, neither was sitting out in the cold, damp atmosphere afterwards. A kid tried running away and another tried fighting a staff member, so I was naturally pretty on edge at the time, as were most of the other kids. Martha and her mom were talking about something or other. I tried to keep as much distance as I could between us without getting in trouble. Then, May came up to me. She was barefoot on the pavement in her PJs. She hadn't managed to bring anything outside with her. I felt bad, so I opened up my blanket and let her in so she could stay warm. The kid didn't even have shoes, so this was the least I could do. I did my best to comfort her through everything that was happening. When, mid-conversation, Martha approached us and began tugging on my blanket. A moment passed and she looked at me and said, Can I come in? Now, considering that Martha was fully dressed, totally okay, called me fat on multiple occasions, and made fun of May's autistic brother and made her cry, I decided, no, sorry, I can't fit anyone else. Martha continued to try and get under my blanket, but I had no obligation to her, and it wasn't a particularly big blanket. It didn't even cover my mattress, or reach my feet when draped over me, and I'm pretty sure after pestering me for a bit, Martha huffed and walked off and I assumed it was over, until her mother came over, with her hanging back a few paces. Now, it's kind of super against the rules to speak to any kids who aren't yours here, so I was surprised when this lady started talking to me. The staff were tied up with the runners and the fighters, but our conversation went something like this. The mom went up to my face and began speaking to me in a raised tone of voice. Again, I'm noise sensitive, so not fun. Let my daughter under your blanket. I'm sorry, but no, nobody else can fit and the other girl here doesn't have shoes. But my daughter is so cold, I think she needs it more than you two do. Keep in mind that this blanket is mine, something I brought from home to this place. I'm sorry, miss, but it's mine. I can't give my blanket to your daughter. 
This lady is now holding the hem of my blanket like she's about to yank it from us, and is full on yelling at us. May and I are flinching. She's scared and I'm really bad with yelling. You can't hog this blanket all to yourself! If you can't share, then you should give Martha the blanket! At this point, her yelling attracted a few staff members who weren't caught up with all the behavioral kids, who told her that she wasn't allowed to talk to us. She kept complaining about how it was unfair that I had a blanket and her poor, dear daughter had to freeze. I spent the rest of the drill comforting May, who was crying because she had been yelled at. Entitled parents are always no fun, but they're especially bad when they start screwing with mentally ill kids such as myself and presumably May, though I still can't tell if she was behavioral or simply mentally ill. Please, teach your freaking kids and yourselves some manners. Thanks. This story's called, Entitled Hockey Mom Tries to Defend Her Little Angel From a Boarding Penalty, Among Others, Entitled Kid Gets the Crap Beat Out of Him. Hello, Reddit. I've been perusing this sub more often and almost thought my posting days were over. Little did I know. So, some context. I play in a neighborhood hockey league. Kinda like a beer league, but for children. It's almost not even organized, except an adult referees it, and sometimes parents show up. We had a game this fateful day, and as I was walking it, I noticed we were playing against entitled kids team, Bruins for simplicity. Our team was first in the league, Wild for simplicity, and entitled kids team was second, so it would be a grueling match. Now, entitled kid was normally a hypocritical bully in the first place, like dumping out water, throwing cheese, cheap shots, etc. And of course, whenever someone would retaliate, he would pull the whole, Oh, woe is me! He shoved me! Which is legal, even in a milk league like mine. And when I say cheap shots, I mean dirt freaking cheap. He almost snapped my then crush's neck after throwing a hip check on her causing her to do a flip and land on her head. And when the whole team came skating at him calling for his head, he deadass skated behind the ref, petrified. So yeah, this is kinda pathetic. So we've got our stuff ready and went on the ice for a pregame skate and warm-ups. Immediately, when I saw that Entitled Kid had pranked one of his teammates with a taped skate blade, which made him fall, Entitled Kid just skated off, howling. Then he yelled at his trendy for not saving the shot he had fired at him, almost going bar down, which is hella hard to save from a half-goalie perspective. I shoot a few warm-ups and skate around, and eventually the game starts. I checked in my trendy real quick, just to be sure she was ready, and eventually the puck dropped. I should also mention, this was one of those games that Entitled Mother decided to go to, and earlier in the season, she had been banned for yelling at the ref after Entitled Kid got called on slashing. Skipping a decent chunk of the first period, Entitled Kid had already given two big hits, which were legal. I was already kinda pissed because one of them was on my, admittedly, crush. I kept playing and eventually I had a breakaway opportunity and scored. Entitled Kid smashed his stick on the ground, nearly breaking it. His coach yells at him and he goes off on the ice. On to the next period, about halfway through, he starts talking smack to me like, That girl sucked. My dead grandma can shoot better than you, kid. Good for her, bud. At least her ankles aren't in pieces from getting dangled like yours. Please, I just lost my balance. Sure you did. It's at this point that I get a hard shove from Entitled Kid and the ref picks it up. Two minutes in the box for interference. Entitled Mom pipes up from the other end of the rink. Oh, come on! He barely touched him! Awesome Ref says, Ma'am, please be a little less out there with your complaints. Step off, homophobic slur! Awesome Ref raising his voice, Do I need to remove you from these premises again? No, sir. Finally, she shuts the hell up. After the two-minute penalty, Entitled Kid is released and immediately goes for a cheap shot on my crush. She's skating the puck up the ice, bending it like a boss, and dangerously close to the boards too. Entitled Kid takes the opportunity to smash my crush into the boards. One minor detail missed. She was facing the damn boards. So... 
basically, Entitled Kid skated full speed and shoulder smashed her into pure wood and plexiglass. My crush crumbles to the ground, holding her face. My whole team skated over and started tossing shoves and yelling at Entitled Kid. While the team nurse and my crush's mom, relevant later, the ref obviously calls for a penalty. That's when Entitled Mother tunes in and says, Oh, for God's sake, you didn't even touch ya! She's just embellishing and being a bussy. My crush's mom goes over to deal with the entitled mother. Meanwhile, entitled kid looks down at my crush and says, Remember how hard that smash was, then compare it to tonight's. This was the last straw. He was getting his ego raised by his teammates. I throw down my gloves and sucker punch him in the face. He moves back and throws his own gloves down. You made a big bucking mistake, bud. Try me, boar. I throw a wild haymaker that sends him tumbling to the ice. Once he's down, I go down as well and just start wailing on the kid. His nose pretty much exploded with blood and the whole team was trying to pry me off of him. They do, eventually, and future OP here, not before I broke his nose and jaw. We were both escorted off the ice, him because he was pissing blood out of his face like a fire hose, and me because I got game misconduct. <laughs> Pitch. Me and my crush both head back to the locker room. We sit down on the bench and I try to make her feel relaxed until the game ends. We eventually win 3-1 to one and learned after that, Entitled Kid and Entitled Mother were banned from the league for the rest of the season, about 30 games. We disassembled our hockey gear and all's well ends well. Side note, after my crush's fractured jaw healed, we eventually had our first date. Thanks for reading. I've always been of the mindset that hockey sucks, even though I guarantee that I would have a blast playing it. It's kind of like soccer. I hate watching soccer, but it's really fun to play. Anyways, um, goodness gracious, how the hell do you punch him hard enough to break his jaw and his uh, nose isn't that hard to break, but to break his jaw on hard ice, but like the back of his skull is fine because hockey ice is hard, man. This story's called, My Parents Ruined My Chances of Having a Normal Life. Long story, I'm very frustrated and I've never posted in this sub before. Forgive any formatting issues on my mouth. I'm 22, female. My parents are extremely religious and homeschooled all six of my siblings and I from kindergarten to grade 12. We had joined a homeschool group for a bit when I was around five or six, but one of the dads told my dad that we should go to more events and that offended my dad because, how dare someone else tell me what to do with my family? And that was the end of it. So from around six years old to about the age of 12, the only friends I had were my siblings and eventually my nieces and nephews. It was hard. My youngest brother is my dad's favorite child's favorite person and favorite companion. Nothing anyone else ever does can compare to my 21-year-old brother who still lives at home and never went to school after high school. He's the exception to every rule my other siblings and I were forced to comply to. He was also always bigger than me, since I'm pretty small, and was borderline cruel to me if I I threatened his good standing with my dad, to the point where if my boyfriend puts his hand up to stroke my face, I automatically flinch away. It's hard to see my boyfriend look so sad when he just wanted to touch me in a very innocent way, and I flinched as if he were going to hit me. My dad never stopped my brother from hitting me. He never stopped him from twisting my arms behind my back, to the point where one of my shoulders got dislocated and I had to go to the hospital. He never stopped him from doing bad things to me and my nieces multiple times times for years, jeez. He never stopped him. Now, I had the unfortunate lot of being born female. As you can guess, women aren't as valuable in their religion as men are, and my parents had four daughters and only three sons. My dad firmly believed that my schooling only needed to go as far as basic math, basic English, and some anatomy. I still don't know math very well, because once I turned 12, I had to take over my mom's jobs of cooking, cleaning, organizing, helping my brothers with school and helping my sisters with their kids. I was, however, allowed to join cadets when I turned 13. I smudged the truth about what we were doing so that I would be allowed to stay and make some friends. If my dad
dad knew that I would be teaching males, he would have fought with the commanding officer and pulled me out. So from 12 to 19, the only social thing I was able to do was cadets. That's where I met my best friend, all my close friends, and my now boyfriend. Life was pretty good for a while. My brother was occupied, so he couldn't hurt me. I had friends, and I had learned how to stay on my dad's good side. It all goes sideways when I was about 17. I wanted to apply for college, and my dad said he wouldn't let me graduate until I did three book reports on books he chose. I didn't agree with the books he chose because I felt like he was making me read books on a woman's place and why I should just be a wife and a mother. He threw the book at me and it hit me. I left to live with my sister. He got really mad and wouldn't talk to me. Eventually, with my mother's promoting, I was allowed to move back home and I started college. I just graduated back in December and moved 37 and a half hours across the country to another province with my boy friend, but my family doesn't know that. I've been trying to apply for a new driver's license, a new health insurance card, and a new passport. I can't get any of them because my dad threw out my freaking birth certificate when I refused to write his book reports. He was so angry at me for not writing a report that he threw out the one piece of paper that I needed to start my life. I can't get coverage unless I have my birth certificate, and now I need to apply for a new one, but I really don't think my parents are going to give me the information I need to fill it out. So now I'm stuck in a new province, basically alone, besides my boyfriend, and I have no safety at all. I can't drive, I can't go to the clinic if I get sick, I can't travel, and I can't even apply for the one thing that would fix all that because my parents won't give me what I need. I just feel gypped of a life that should have been somewhat normal and now I have so much to deal with from them. I don't even know if this is the right sub to post this in, I just need to word vomit my frustration at this whole freaking ordeal. Edit. I calmed down after talking to my boyfriend and we applied for a new birth certificate together. So now I hopefully will have one on the way soon and be able to start my life here properly. Thank you everyone for your kind words and offers of advice. It really helped. You're great people. <laughs> Yo, um, I'm pretty sure that's messed up and I'm sure that there's some sort of agency out there that would deal with this sort of kind of stuff. I'm not saying you gotta contact them, but that's, that's a bit much. Throwing out your birth certificate. I'm sure that's against a law somewhere to throw away someone else's very important documents. And a birth certificate, if I recall correctly, has the original hand or footprints from when you're a baby. And if if you don't have that, that thing's gone. That's the one freaking actual footprint out there of your baby foot. It's gone. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.